ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीत श्रवता स्वकथा कृष्ण पुण्यश्रवण कीर्तन हृदय तो हि भद्राणी विधु नोते सृहसता नष्ट प्रायश भद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ट की हरे कृष्ण सो टुडे विल बी कवरिंग श्रीमद भागवतम सेवेंथ कैंटो चैप्टर नाइन Prahlad Maharaj pacifies Lord Narasimha Dev with prayers. So in the previous class we covered Shrimad Bhagavatam 7th canto chapter 8 and the title of the chapter was Lord Narasimha Dev slays the king of the demons and who was this king of the demons Hiranyakashipu that's your raj Hiranyakashipu. And in the last prayer by the residents inhabitants of Vaikuntha Loka it was revealed that this Hiranyakashipu was none other than Jay and that he had been you know blessed by the lord so lord's you know position is always at the absolute truth and he does not consider anyone as his enemy or friends so in that was a blessing to hinakashipu so today we'll be covering shrimad bhagavatam 7th canto chapter 9 the very first verse she narad uvacha सुरादय सर्वे ब्रह्म रुद्रपुर नौपैत मशक मनु संरंभम सुदुरासद श्री नारद उवाच द ग्रेट सेंटली सेज नारद मुनि सेट एवं दस सुर आदि द ग्रुप्स ऑफ डेमी गॉड्स सर्वे ऑल ब्रह्म रुद्र पुरा सुरा रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय लॉर्ड ब्रह्मा एंड लॉर्ड शिव न नॉट उपाय तुम टू गो बिफोर द लॉर्ड अशिकन एबल मन्यो संरंभम इन अ कंप्लीटली एंग्री मोड सुदुरासदम वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू अप्रोच लॉर्ड नरसिंहदेव ट्रांसलेशन बाई हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति विदान स्वामी शिल प्रभुपाद की जय द ग्रेट सेन नारद मुनि कंटिन्यूड the demigods headed by lord brahma lord shiv and other great demigods dare not come forward before the lord who at that time was extremely angry purport shila narottam das thakur has sung in his prema bhakti chandrika krodha bhakta dveshi jane anger should be used to punish a demon who is envious of devotees काम क्रोध लोभ मोह मद एंड मत्सर लस्ट एंगर क्रीड इल्यूशन प्राइड एंड एनवी ऑल हैव देयर प्रॉपर यूज फॉर द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड एंड हिज डिवोटी अ डिवोटी ऑफ द लॉर्ड कैनॉट टॉलरेट ब्लैसफेमी ऑफ द लॉर्ड और हिज अदर डिवोटीज 
and the Lord also cannot tolerate blasphemy of a devotee. Thus Lord Nasimadev was so very angry that the great demigods like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva and even the goddess of fortune, who is the Lord's constant companion, could not pacify him, even after offering prayers of glorification and praise. No one was able to pacify the Lord in his anger, but because the Lord was willing to exhibit his affection for Prahlad Maharaj, all the demigods and others present before the Lord pushed Prahlad Maharaj forward to pacify him. Hare Krishna. Om Ajnana Timurandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Mukham Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langhayate Girim Yad Kripata Daham Vande Shri Gurum Deen Taranam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. So, this chapter includes elaborate prayers by Prahlad Maharaj. So, it so happened that after, you know, Vakunta, the inhabitants of Vakunta uh, revealed that Hinakashipu was none other than Jay. And still, after their prayers, what does Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva see and all the demigods are seeing? That Lord Nasimadev is very angry. And none of them are able to pacify him with prayers. So at that time, Lord Brahma approaches Goddess of Fortune, Lakshmi Devi. And he requests her to approach the Lord and pacify him. But even she had not seen such a wonderful form of the Lord. And with his anger, even she was afraid. So she could not approach. And at that time, Lord Brahma saw Prahlad Maharaj who was standing right beside him, you know, nearby. So he approached Prahlad Maharaj and he instructed him that Nasimadev is very angry at his father. So Prahlad Maharaj should try to pacify. So you should try to pacify Lord Nasimadev because he is very angry at your father. Hiranyakashipu. So it is very interesting that the first lesson we derive from here is that Lord Nasimadev, he just, you know, was exhibiting his affection for Prahlad Maharaj. So he could not be satisfied by others because his, the cause of his appearance was to save Prahlad Maharaj from Hiranyakashipu and to annihilate Hiranyakashipu, which is also revealed in the prayers by Prahlad Maharaj. So the first lesson we learn is no one can know or please Lord who was extremely angry at this time. And in uh, Brahma Samhita, the 33rd verse in the 5th chapter also reveals it. Advaitam vachutam anadim anantarupam adhyam purana purusham navyavanam cha vedeshu dullabham adullabham atma bhakta govindam adi purusham tamaham bhajami So vedeshu dullabham so even though Vedas, you know, it is very difficult. Dulab. Dulab is very difficult to attain. Dulabham. But adulabham. Even though Vedas, you know, one may be expert in Vedas and may be using the you know path of the Vedas to please the Lord, still he is not easily approachable. Adulabham Atma Bhakta. But he is simply approached. Adulabham is not so difficult when one is engaged in devotional service you know one approaches and tries to pacify the lord and please the lord by devotional service and of course the prayers by the various demigods are you know one of the process of devotional service and they are trying to pacify yet this is the affection of lord nasimha dev that he is still angry and prahlad maharaj is approaching with the prayer to pray to him and the first thing that Prahlad Maharaj does is, you know, Prahlad Maharaj, he was fearless. You know, even when his father, Hinakashipu, the demon king, who was the controller of the universe at that time, our material universe, even at that time, Prahlad Maharaj was fearless, even in front of his father. He was actually instructing his father 
the first instruction he gave his father was that one who is affect, you know, so much into sense gratification is attracted by money and sex should go to forest, you know, should go to a solid, you know, place of solitude and should meditate on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And at that time, Hrikashupi had laughed. The second instruction was he had revealed what's the best knowledge you have achieved is the ninth process of devotional service. Shavanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Pada Sevanam Achanam Vandam Dasyam Sakyam Atmani Vedanam. The ninth process of devotional service hearing, chanting, remembering Lord Vishnu, serving his lotus feet, uh, serving him as a servant, singing prayers to him, worshipping him, acting as a friend to him, and offering everything to him. And just by following any one of these processes, one can attain perfection in their lives. And on the third occasion, when Hinakashipu had challenged Prahlad, that by whose power are you able to challenge me? You know, you are not able to be controlled by me. Then Prahlad Maharaj has revealed that the source of his power is also the source of, you know, the source of his father's power, Hinakashipu's power, is the same as the source of Prahlad Maharaj's power, which is none other than the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Parusham Nishu. So again, I am the ability in men. So anything that Hirakashupa had received through the boon of Brahma was actually being provided direct, indirectly by the source was Lord Krishna. So that has been revealed. So a devotee is always fearless. So Prahlad Maharaj, he approached Lord Nasimha Dev and paid him prostrated obeisances. We also call it dandavat, you know, just falling like a stick. Dandu means stick. So when you fall straight like a stick, that's those, you know, he's paying obeisances like that. And when he is paying obeisances, Lord Nasimha Dev, he immediately becomes jubilant looking at Prahlad Maharaj. And he raises Prahlad Maharaj and places his hand on Prahlad Maharaj's head. So who has placed hand on Prahlad Maharaj's head? Lord Nasimha Dev. And it is said just by the touch on his head. Prahlad Maharaj was cleared of all, means he was freed from all material desires. He had that, you know, that was the transcendental touch of the Lord. So all the material desires vanish from Prahlad Maharaj's heart. We have seen similar instances earlier also. We are Lord, just by the touch of the Lord, you know, devotees, they get relieved of their sinful reactions and even of any material desires they had. Can you think of any example? Dhruv Maharaj, yes. When Lord Vishnu appeared in front of him, Dhruv Maharaj was meditating on Lord Vishnu and what was the mantra he was reciting? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So he was seeing the Lord in the lotus of his heart and suddenly the Lord vanished. And he immediately opened his eyes and see, saw the Lord in front of him. And he couldn't even offer prayers properly. You know, he was in such a state of shock. And so he just fell. And at that time, it's, you know, to pay obeisance, and Lord touched his head with his, the conch. And just by the touch of the conch, all material desires vanished from Dhruva Maharaj's heart. So immediately he was cleansed of any material desires. And at that time, the desire he had, you know, the goal he wanted to attain at the beginning of his tapa, of his austerity, it appeared like pieces of glasses. And he understood that devotional service is the topmost, you know, benediction he can attain. So similarly, in this case, Prahlad Maharaj being freed, he started reciting. Now it's very interesting because... You know, when somebody starts reciting prayer, you know, people may ask for their qualification. And Prahlad Maharaj is giving his introduction that he is not at all qualified. First is, and he gives many examples as how he is not qualified. He said that there are all these demigods who are in the mode of goodness, who are reciting prayers, are certainly qualified to, you know, pacify the Lord, 
to please the Lord. And Prahlad Maharaj is saying, we are born in the family of demons, right? Because his father was a demon. So that's why. Now his grandfather was a devotee, and he's one of the Prajapatis, Kashyap Muni. But Hirakashipu was a demon. So he's saying that we are born in the family of demons, so we are not qualified. And he's also referring to the association, right? Because demons have association with other demons and who are seeking what? Material gratification, sense gratification. And yet at the same time, he's saying, and analytically he proves that he would still, you know, offer prayers as permitted by his intelligence. So it is very int inter uh, interesting to see the contradiction. He starts with his not being qualified, yet at the same time, he says, even though we are not qualified, we would offer prayers based on our intelligence. Sometimes we see people find excuses, right? Not to take to devotional service. <laughs> it's very interesting that recently we actually uh, saw a message. It was on a Facebook or a WhatsApp somewhere. Uh, the message was that these God's men, you know, they cheat people. And there are many followers who are sincere, pious followers. And all these followers are tainted, but then they are cheated. So, and the person who was giving is, you know, the group where it was given, most of the people in that particular group were not devotees, and they were more like, you know, we don't have to, you know, worship God, there is no God, that kind of mindset was going on in this particular group. So with that mindset, they're saying, so we should not take to devotional service. Doesn't seem like a sensible logic, does it? Raise your hand if you have uh, experienced food poisoning. So after you experienced food poisoning, did you give up eating? <laughs> right? Doesn't make sense. Raise your hand if you have been given a medication by a doctor that actually affected you worse. Means, you know, it actually, instead of helping, made your condition worse. Has it ever happened to you? Well... Did you stop taking medicine afterwards? Or did you stop taking advice from other doctors afterwards? Raise your hand when you follow someone's advice, but it actually acted against you. So did you stop taking advice from others? Guidance from others? No. That's not intelligence. You know, just because, and Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, that for people who want to be cheated, I create cheaters. I give them cheaters. And Srila Prabhupada has given so many nice examples of how, you know, demigod worshippers, when they are trying to seek, they're actually seeking sense gratification. And that's why they're always lamenting and aspiring. And once who are in devotional service, Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma Na Shochati Na Kangshati Samha Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhaktim Lavate Param He's saying the one who's at the Brahman platform Na shodshati, na kangshati. Does not lament. Lamentation is something for an event that happened in the past. Na kangshati. Does not have aspirations for futures. That I want to attain this in the future. And is constantly present in the present moment that this is what I'm engaged in, devotional service. Mad bhaktim labhate param. Is constantly engaging and sees everyone as equal. Everyone as Equal. So what does that mean when one sees everyone as equal? That everyone is servant of the Lord, right? Everyone is jivas, living entities, they are souls. They are not this material body. They are the spirit souls. And the dharma of spirit soul is that they are the eternal servant of the Lord. So everyone looks from that particular perspective. So in, very interestingly, Prahlad Maharaj first saying that he is not qualified, yet at the same time he would try to recite prayers to pacify the Lord. So this is interestingly very contradictory and it was very interesting. It reminds me of uh, Saturday during Prashadam time. We were honoring Prashadam and at that time a couple of brahmacharis they were discussing. Very in interesting. They were saying, oh, if somebody says they are not self-realized, means they def cannot be self-realized. 
and this is a very risky area this is a you know so during that discussion i kind of like uh, was asked to contribute and i said we should be very careful not to offense other, offend others why because if someone is saying they're not qualified maybe they are being humble with their position and they do not see themselves qualified and they seek further purification you know if you see the descriptions of goloka a gopi is looking at the good service of another gopi right and she says oh she is serving so nicely so i should serve more better than how i have been serving so they try to improve their service in you know pleasing the lord and when lord sees you know devotee is serving him nicely his beauty increases <coughs> and when the gopis see <coughs> the beauty of lord krishna increasing their beauty increases so there is a constant competition of beauty and service there you know they are constantly serving each other lord is of course you know he is reciprocating while the devotee is serving and all this serving by the devotee is for whose benefit whose benefit is it lord's benefit or devotee's benefit right right it's for devotee's benefit because we purify ourselves so that's also revealed by prahlad maharaj so again when he writes his prayers he starts with that with material qualification one cannot satisfy the lord and with devotional service one can easily satisfy the lord and prahlad maharaj gives various examples like one who is you know of higher birth one who is learned one who is intelligent one who is beautiful and he continues to go on and this particular verse which is uh, verse 9 in shrimad bhagavatam 7th canto 9th chapter is very similar to a verse that was sung by queen kunti she had said janmeshwarya shuta shivir etmana madha puman nevarhat avidhatum vai tam akinchana gocharam so my lord she is saying your lordship can easily be approached but only by those who are materially exhausted one who is on the path of material progress trying to improve himself with respectable parentage great opulence high education and bodily beauty cannot approach you with sincere feeling again the interesting part is sincere feeling with sincere feeling so one who is seeking material qualifications you know increasing their parentage increasing their uh status in the society or gaining more wealth gaining more beauty when they approach the lordship they are not approaching with sincere feeling to please the lordship they are approaching with the feeling to satisfy themselves their own goals so they cannot you know easily satisfy but one who is materially exhausted so one who is materially exhausted is again you have to look at it from the right context is one who is seeking spiritual progress right because material exhaustion means they do not want their sense gratification but rather they are trying to satisfy lord's senses so that is the mindset so with that context and prahlad maharaj continues to glorify devotion service and how material qualification is not enough shishi garnatai ki jai श्री श्री राधा मदन मोहन की जय श्री श्री सीताराम लक्ष्मण हनुमान की जय शिला प्रभुपाद की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव विंद की जय एंड देन द वेरी नेक्स्ट वर्स वर्स टेन प्रहलाद महाराज रिवील्स दैट इवन अ ब्राह्मण हु इज नॉट अ डिवोटी ऑफ द लॉर्ड यू नो के नॉट हु purify even himself while a dog eater who has surrendered everything to the lord and is a devotee of the lord can purify his whole family now it is very important to understand the context that when this example is been given it's been given because the brahmana is in false prestige he is looking at his position now this reminds me of a very nice story 
when Srila Prabhupada, you know, he had taken many of his Western devotees, disciples to India. So two of the sannyasis, you know, who were his disciples, had uh, visited a temple. And at the temple, the Brahman or Pujari, you know, he saw them very nicely, you know, dressed and very devoted to the Lord. So his blessing was when he came, he gave them a blessing, may in your next birth you may be born as Brahmana. <laughs> so they were confused because they were sannyasis, Brahman sannyasis, of course. Sannyas is, you know, an ashram and Brahman is a word. So that was their word. So they were surprised to hear this blessing. So they went to Srila Prabhupada and said, Srila Prabhupada, we got this blessing from the Pujari. What should we take this to be? And Srila Prabhupada laughed. And then he narrated a story in response. The story goes that there was actually, during the time of British rule in India, an old lady in a village. You know, they, they, she had some relatives and those relatives wanted to usurp her land. They wanted to encroach on her land. So she was really troubled. And at that time, you know, the district magistrates, they used to go from villages to villages to see if everything is going on nice or not. So British magistrate, he was visiting her village and many of her neighbors and friends, they suggested that she should approach the magistrate with the, you know, her case. And she approached the magistrate and presented her case in front of the magistrate. And he immediately gave a ruling in her favor and said all the papers should be written properly with her, you know, in her name and so forth. So there's no confusion in the future. So hearing this, she became very happy. And she blessed him, may you become a constable. <laughs> because in her eyes, she had seen in the village the constable, the policeman, to be of the highest value. The most important position, you know. So this was her understanding and Srila Prabhupada explained that similarly the Pujari only thinks that being born in a house of a Brahmana will make you a Brahman and that is the highest position you can attain. While what does Lord Krishna say is in Bhagavad Gita? Chatur Varna Maya Shishtam Guna Karma Vibhagasha. Right? So the four varnas are created by me, Lord Krishna is saying. They are created by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Shri Krishna. Guna, Karma, Vibhagasha. So how are they divided, these four varnas? Guna is, you know, born of your nature. And Karma, by your activities, by the, you know, what kind of job you do, what kind of activities you perform. So they determine it. So sometimes, you know, this is a case and Prahlad Maharaj is glorifying that even a Brahmana who is in false prestige thinks, thinking that he is a Brahmana, he is the highest caste, he cannot even purify himself because he is in false ego. His false ego is very strong. And uh, even a dog eater who has surrendered everything to the Lord and is a devotee of the Lord can purify his whole family. Not just himself, but his whole family. You know, anyone he comes in association with, you know, gets purified. What to talk of just family. And we already covered, so when one is engaged in devotional service, who is benefited? The devotee is benefited. You know, Lord is Atma Ram. He is self-satisfied. He doesn't need, you know, food to be offered. He doesn't need anything to be offered. He doesn't need. Yet at the same time, for our purification, he appears as Archivigra form. He appears to accept our worship. He ex appears to accept our prayers. He appears to accept our food offerings that we make to him. And what are these for? These are for our own purification. Because Lord is self-satisfied. We have to understand from that particular perspective. So, Prahlad Maharaj glorifies devotional service, that it continues to purify the devotee. And then he also says that please be pacified that this demon Hina Kashipu is dead. 
And it's very interesting the analogy he gives. Prahlad Maharaj is giving the analogy that just like the saintly persons are jubilant when a scorpion or snake is killed. Now when Srila Prabhupada, he had some doubts. But when he read this the, in the prayers of Prahlad Maharaj, that even the saintly persons are jubilant at the killing of a snake or a scorpion because these are living entities who are envious by nature. Snake and scorpion, they're very envious by nature. So even Srila Prabhupada had doubt. Once it had so happened that Srila Prabhupada, after he had you know, accepted the initiation by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj Prabhupada, he was at the ashram and some devotees, they saw a snake and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj, he came out and said, kill it. And that arose some doubts in Srila Prabhupada's, you know, mind as my guru, he's asking a snake to be killed. It's a living entity. But then when he heard, his doubts were dissipated. They immediately, you know, were cleared. When he heard that Prahlad Maharaj is singing, when scorpion or snake, which are envious entities, are killed, they're jubilant. So again, and at that point, when he says, and he continues his prayers, and Prahlad Maharaj, of course, uh, when Nasima Dev, he had picked up Prahlad Maharaj and placed his hands on Prahlad Maharaj's hand. You know, he had basically said, you know, he was also very jubilant and transcendentally happy to see Prahlad. And Prahlad Maharaj continues to glorify the Lord. And here, he is glorifying the Lord Yet at the same time, he's asking for benediction that, you know, Lord Nasimha have asked him, that asked for any benediction. So Prahlad Maharaj is asking for a benediction that please, please be in touch with your pure devotee and let me serve him. So it's amazing that what is the highest benediction? Of course, we have to also understand the context that Prahlad Maharaj has been completely purified of any material desire. And at that point, the highest benediction he's asking is to put me in touch with your pure devotee and let me serve him submissively. He's not asking, make me the king of the universe that his father was seeking, right? He's not asking, make me more beautiful or make me more influential or make me immortal like his father was seeking. He was seeking to serve the pure devotee of the Lord. And then, also a little later, he says that I am born in a demoniac family. And I am always in the association of demons. And demons are always seeking material gratification, material advancement. And so, our position is very lamentable. This is a very lamentable position of people when they are seeking only material advancement, no spiritual advancement. Because the only thing that increases in material advancement is hankering and lamentation. Hankering for more. How the senses are identified? Again, let's look at, you know, Srila Prabhupada gave the analogy that senses, you know, when you try to satisfy the senses, that's like pouring ghee, pouring, you know, butter in fire. And does that put out a fire? No, it doesn't. It actually, the fire becomes stronger and stronger. So he's identifying the importance of association, of a devotee association, and how lamentable it is to have a demoniac association. And then he starts, you know, again, in the dis he identifies that he's in a disciplic succession. How does he identify? That even though I was born in the family of demons, Devashi Narad, he, you know, took mercy. Means he, you know, Prahlad Maharaj received mercy of Devashi Narad and received spiritual knowledge. Now, it is very interesting that he's identifying that he received spiritual knowledge from Devashi Narad and he was blessed by Devashi Narad. Now, when someone is blessed, they say, okay, I'm blessed. Now I can do whatever I feel like. No, that's not the case. <laughs> Prahlad Maharaj is actually identifying further that he wants to serve Devashinara, that is his first duty. 
because a disciple it wants to be disciplined. What's the definition of a disciple? One who is ready to be disciplined. So, Prahlad Maharaj is still seeking. Now, someone can say, wait a minute, Prahlad Maharaj is freed of all material desires. What does he need to be disciplined on? We have to understand that this is Prahlad Maharaj re revealing that he wants to further serve his spiritual master. And also, we also covered like last week, Guru Govind Dono Khade Kake Lagu Pai, Balihari Guru Apanu Govindiyo Milai. So when a devotee is standing in front and suddenly he sees his spiritual master and uh, Govind, Lord Shri Krishna, present in front of him, there's a dilemma, right? Whom should I pay obeisances to first? And then the next is revealed, Balihari Guru Apanu Govindiyo Milai. So I would pay first obeisances to my spiritual master because by your mercy I am able to attain this spiritual, you know, the supreme personality of Godhead, Lord Shri Krishna. I am able to see him. So Prahlad Maharaj, he is continuing his prayers and now when somebody reveals that he has been blessed, he has to reveal that knowledge also. So Prahlad Maharaj, you know, very nicely, he takes on to the topic what he learned from his spiritual master. And he starts reciting that how the Supreme Personality of Godhead is transcendental. He is the Lord of all the 16 elements, yet he is within and without. He is present in it, yet he is aloof. He is distinct from all these elements. He is the one who creates these material elements, yet at the same time he is the energetic, and this is the energy, the material energy. And he goes into creation. And he gives the example, just like from the seed in his navel came the lotus flower, which is this material universe, on which the first living entity, who's the first living entity in the material universe? Lord Brahma was born. And that Lord Brahma, thinking that Lord is outside the lotus, you know, dove into the ocean for 100 celestial years trying to find the Lord. But then he came back and took shelter of the lotus and he heard the word tapa. And so and so it continues. And Prahlad Maharaj, once again, is very much summarized in Srimad Bhagavatam. He gives the example that, Oh Lord, you appeared as a Hayagriva with the face of a horse. And you killed the demons Madhu and Katab. Now it is very interesting. Why would Prahlad Maharaj give a reference of Madhu and Katab and Hayagriva? Because Lord Nasimadev, he has appeared as half human, half lion. Right? So he is showing that, Lord, you can appear in any form. You have appeared as a demigod, you have appeared as a human, you have appeared as an animal, you have appeared in so many forms. So he is showing that, yes, I accept that you are benevolent, Lord, and you know, you are so merciful, and for the protection of your devotee, you appear. And in killing my father and in saving me, you have done this, and the only cause is to prove the words of your devotee as true. Because Henry Kashyapa has said, is your Lord present in this pillar? And Prahlad Maharaj said, yes, he's present everywhere. So of course, he's present everywhere means he's also present in the pillar. And just to prove those words of mine, you appeared. And that is the only cause of your appearance. Paritranayan sadhunam vinashaya chadushkritam dharma sansthapanathaya sambhavami yuge yuge. So Lord appears from millennium after millennium just to, what does he do? Paritranaya sadhunam. To save the devotees and vinashaya chadushkritam. To annihilate the miscreants and to reestablish yes, religion, the dharma. And he also calls uh, Lord as three yuga because he appeared in the three yugas. As the Lord of the universe, in the fourth yuga, you do not ascertain yourself to be as the Lord. You appear as a devotee. He's actually hinting that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he appeared, he appeared as a devotee of Lord Krishna. So even that is being revealed by Prahlad Maharaj. And the glorification continues. And then, now again understand, Prahlad Maharaj, he is saying that I am most fallen. But what to talk of me means I have taken birth in this material world because of our past deeds. And so I'm most fallen, constantly tormented 
like a man who has many wives. Now, Prahlad Maharaj was a young boy, five year old. How could he have wives? But then he's revealing that what are the, his, who are his wives? He's revealing his wives. He's saying that my senses are like my wives. My tongue wants to taste palatable things. You know, he wants to have association with women because of those desires, which is called skin disease, but Srila Prabhupada used to call it skin disease. And uh, also that eyes want to see beautiful things. Ears are not, you know, attracted towards hearing your glories, but to the cinema songs. It's very interesting, Srila Prabhupada said cinema songs in the translation. And constantly, you know, you want to touch soft things and always seeking sense gratification. So he's saying that in the material world, all the living entities are constantly tormented because there are desires for sense gratification. And these desires are very strong. So he's constantly tormented. And that, you know, he's seeking shelter. That he's saying, when will you take me back to Vakuntha? Vakuntha means a place there is no misery. Kuntha is misery. Where is one pl a place that's devoid of? So when will you take, you know, bring, call me back to Vakuntha, where I can constantly engage in what? In devotional service. So this is also very strong. Sometimes it's very interesting that some uh, people, they speculate that you engage in devotional service and when you are purified, you become God. No, you don't become God. <laughs> You become godly, yes. Cleanliness is next to godliness. But the process itself is the goal. Srila Prabhupada also used to give an example of a beggar and a king. We have once a beggar, he goes to the king and he says, I want to see gold. The king says, you're a beggar, what do you want to, why do you want to see gold? The beggar says, I'm just curious, I have heard what gold is like, but I've never seen it. So the king calls his treasure, he says, show him gold. So, the beggar, he just climbs a few steps and the treasure opens the door and he sees gold. And now suddenly the beggar is shocked and he looks back because the steps he climbed were also made of gold. But he didn't know that they were gold unless he saw what the gold is. So similarly, you know, when we engage in devotional service, the goal is to engage in devotional service. <laughs> but when you realize that, oh, what are the spiritual beings doing? They're constantly serving the Lord. So that is the goal as well as is the process. So he's glorifying devotional service that way. And he's saying that the Grahamitis, so-called Grahasthas, who are considering the family life and seeking sense gratification through sex and marriage, you know, they are constantly tormented because they do not understand the glories of devotional service. And that Lord is everywhere and everything, in everything, yet at the same time he's aloof. And when he's glorifying devotional service, he is glorifying holy name as well, right? And uh, Srila Prabhupada in a similar glorification of holy name actually shared a story, so he just mentioned that once there was an old sinful man, all his life he was sinful. And at the last stages of his life, he called his servant. He said, come here. He said, I have seen those Hare Krishna devotees chanting on beads. So go to the market and get me beads. Right? So the servant is surprised. He's like, but master, you were sinful all your life? Means he says, no, no, I want to try it. I just want to try Chanting on the beads. So the servant went to the market. But then he died before the servant could return back. And it so happened that Yamdutas came to take him. And Vishnu Dutas also came. And Yamduta said, wait a minute. He did not say Narayan this time. We know previously <laughs> when we came and the Jamir was there, we had to return empty handed because he had said Narayan. But in this case, this old man was very sinful all his life and he did not say Narayan. So Vishnu Dutas, they said, no, no, no. Ajamil, we didn't take him. We left him, right? We just sent you back. 
But we didn't take him. But in this case, we have come to take this old man. We have to come to take his soul back to Vaikuntha. And they were surprised. How could it be? He didn't even say the name. And they are saying, because he had the desire to say the holy name at the last moment of his life, you know, at the moment of his death, he had the desire, strong desire to say the holy name, qualifies him to go back home, back to Godhead. While Ajamil, you know, if you look at it, Ajamil was still left. He had to go to Haridwar and purify himself by engaging in devotional service. And then he was able to go back to Vaikuntha. But this old sinful man was qualified to go to Vaikuntha just because he had a strong desire at the last moment of his life, at the moment of death. So those are the glories of Hori name, chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Huh? Srila Prabhupada, in many of his short stories, this is one of the stories, yes, he shared. So now, when, and then again, in the 50th verse, Prahlad Maharaj is revealing, he is stating there are six kinds of devotional service unto you, and who can attain you without performing these devotions, six kinds of devotional service. Now we have understood the nine process of devotional service. But well, this is something new, that there are six kinds of devotional service. And what is he doing? He's offering prayers. And you know what? That's the first kind, offering of prayers. Second is dedicating all the results of activities. Third is worshipping the Lord. Fourth is working on behalf of the Lord. Fifth is always remembering Lord's lotus feet. And sixth is hearing about your glories. It's so interesting when we come for the Srimad Bhagavatam class, we are actually performing all of them. <laughs> right? We are worshipping with our intelligence. The only activities we are engaged is, you know, in hearing his glories, singing his glories, meditating on his glories, and so forth. So at this point, Lord Nasimadev, he was pacified. And smilingly he said to Prahlad Maharaj, May you have a long life. Now, Prahlad Maharaj just asked that when are you going to call me back to Vakunta and Nasima Dev just to purify us and to teach us. He's giving a benediction to Prahlad Maharaj that may you live longer in this material world. Because what is he signifying? That a devotee does not, it does not matter to a devotee whether he is in heaven or in hell, in what state of life. Because he is constantly remembering the Lord. And Prahlad Maharaj in his prayers revealed it. And he is revealing, uh, Lord Nasimadev is saying, that one can understand me by pleasing me. And I can fulfill all one's desires. My pastime is to fulfill the desires of all living entities, so ask for anything. So he's asking Prahlad Maharaj to ask for any benediction that he has. And at that point, Devashinara says, now why, is, why did I say Devashinara said? Because Devashinara is narrating all the story about Prahlad Maharaj, the appearance of Nasimadev, to who? Yudhishthi Maharaj. And this uh, narration of Devashinara to Yudhishthi Maharaj is narrated by Shukde Goswami to Parikshit Maharaj, which is later on recited at Namasharanya by Sutta Goswami to the sages at Namasharanya. And at that point, Devashi Nara is saying that Pahlan Maharaj, who was born in the family of demons, who are seeking material advancement, not spiritual advancement, demons are seeking material advancement, you know, Although allured, because demons would get allured, so Prahlad Maharaj, although allured, he did not want any material benefits for sense gratification. So he's actually saying that Prahlad Maharaj was the best of the demons, best among all the devotees. Previously, he even said that Prahlad Maharaj was the best of the brahmanas. 
he did not want any material benefit or any material benediction. And though allured because of his association, he did not, you know, go in that direction. So, what does Prahlad Maharaj ask for is revealed in the next chapter that we'll cover next week. Hare Krishna. Any questions? So, again, in this particular chapter, we see that Prahlad Maharaj is able to uh, pacify Lord Nasimadev by reciting prayers. And we have been blessed with a Maha Mantra, right? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And constantly reciting the Maha Mantra, we are asking that, Oh Lord, please engage us in your devotional service. And when we, you know, get the devotional service, it is for our own purification. Thus, we should make efforts, little, little efforts, baby steps, but we should continue to make efforts in advancing in spiritual life and not seeking material gratification. Hare Krishna. Any questions or comments? Gantra Shimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Anant Kauri Vaishnavind ki jai, Go Premanande, Hari Hari Hari. All glories to some devotees, all glories to some devotees, all glories to some devotees.